Well, it's been a while. We have some catching up to do. The past five weeks have been quite the journey, you know. I met an e-girl, fan of mine. Then I met an actual girl who's not a fan of mine. Then I left the e-girl. You know, it's funny how drastically things can change in an instant. Or just from a simple no. But whether you like it or not, life just keeps going on. It doesn't stop. Not for you, not for me, not for anyone in between. Over the past five weeks, I've had some time to reflect after she left. I gave up, and it was back to the same old trip it was way back then. It was back to the agonizing loneliness, and life was never the same again. Well, that would have been if I hadn't decided to message her again. One last time I told myself, I felt really fucking bad. I had done something, I wish things had not ended up like this. After all, she was so depressed from me leaving that she had decided to cut her wrists. Something which I couldn't bear to let go. I just could not let someone do that to themselves. I didn't want my loneliness to hurt both of us, nor did I want things to end this badly with such hostility. I wanted to make things right, but little did I know this would only prolong the suffering. In the middle of all this, I had decided to work on a Halloween video. However, I was in no condition to do so. I was scared out of my mind. I was alone. I was sick. I was broken mentally and physically. I could hardly walk without collapsing on the floor in sadness. And, yeah, this happened a few times since. A week later, things have only gotten worse. I couldn't look at myself in the mirror without crying. What I had needed was a regression in life. So I decided to apply for a prestigious institution called the Mental Institution. Yeah, something like that. It sounded fancy and stuff. Which seemed like the right option for me, for someone who's so fucked up, but you know, this proved to be a huge mistake. As not only would I get rejected by the institution, but I would feel rejected by what had remained of my fragments of vague and loose friends, who have decayed into just being three, two if I'd actually really consider them friends. The latter had hurt me even more. For the first time ever, I had felt discomfort from smoking on the roof of my house at 2am. I really needed change, and change just wouldn't come for two more weeks. And this is where I become fed up with giving up. I knew I needed a change, so I mustered up the courage to message her again. I didn't know what to expect. Really, what would you expect to say after someone leaving you in such a horrid state? I mean, I'd feel horrible. I already feel horrible. But it turns out she didn't hate me, which was a huge relief. I had gotten so glad that she was fine, yet so sad that she hadn't moved on. It was clear from the get-go that she had feelings for me, and it just kept getting to me. The only reason why we aren't together is because I need a girl to hug and go places with, not a hypersexual e-girl with schizophrenia to constantly flirt with digitally. The truth is, I liked her. She was edgy. She was insane. Hell, she was literally schizophrenic. She was creative. She was a femme cell with a dark backstory. Just what I've been dreaming of in a girl. So, of course, I had no reason to reject her. In the end, it was her who left. I mean, it was crystal clear that I couldn't commit to her, because I still had a fragment of dignity left within. Never will I sink to the low low of e-dating of emo femcel. By this point, I had come back to reality. I realized I just can't keep doing this anymore. I had to do what my god-given orders were, to review every last cursed anime, and I realized there was at least 200 more to do. Whether I like it or not, I will review it. Finally, the day before Thursday, I decided to get my life back together and review them all. Here we are now. So, my friends might not talk to me, but my imaginary girlfriend in the meantime will keep me comforted. Don't worry guys, she's totally real. Without further ado, we are so fucking Barack! Welcome back to your least favorite cursed anime reviewer. Today, in this anime review, I will be talking about top 10 saddest anime deaths. Yeah! So, number 10 on this list, we got Senketsu. Senketsu is probably the most bizarre character on this list. On one hand, he's not human, rather he's a sailor uniform. Senketsu is from the anime Kill a La Kill, and after his purpose, he gives up his life. Yeah, very tragic. He sacrifices himself to save Ryuku from the lethal heats of the thermosphere, burning up and dying in the process. 
F and chat for a fallen soldier. Simp. Number nine, Lane Staley. Now, Lane Staley was a manga character in the hit anime series Alice in Wonderland. What makes his death stand out from the rest is that his death was slow and conscious, spanning over a full six years. Six years knowing you're dying, knowing that you're at your end, you cannot change though. It's a prolonged death for the rest of your life. That is one of the most miserable ways to go out. And number eight, Ted Kaczynski. He was an American hero, goddammit. He warned us all about the future. He warned us about neoliberal leftism and their hatred of the earth. In this house, Ted Kaczynski is a hero and a story. Number seven, Kirk Cocaine. Kirk Cocaine is the most overhyped and overrated deaths on this list. Kirk Cocaine is from the abstract brain rot anime, I Hate Myself and Want to Die. Ironically enough, he dies in the series finale, which wasn't even expected as the show was not only the top of the anime world, but the top of the industry of entertainment. Now, this fictional dude's death was so fucking impactful and negative, that's why we have the god's worst creation of all time. Actually, it's not God's creation, it's Satan's creation. Nickelback. I know, I know, I know. Someone in the comments is going to mention that, Ah, you see me quit suicide, that's bad. That's really bad. Well, um, I should mention that his autistic, abusive wife, Courtney Love, hired a hitman. And look, the evidence for it is damning. I'm not going to say allegedly, she fucking did it. I cannot go further. However, please, before you type a leftist-style wild text full of reddit here insults, rant, angry white woman microaggressions, please reconsider researching more on the subject. Now, let's get into even more sadder death. Number six, Tomoko. Tomoko is the most adorable waifu to ever exist in anime, which is exactly why the universe wouldn't let us keep such a gym. Tomoko didn't deserve it. Tomoko just wanted to look like someone gave her a hickey. It should have been me. I could have kissed her. What couldn't have been me? She's so gorgeous and lovable. The fact that she's a loser and has no friends is really hard to understand. It's such a waste of potential beauty. We could have gotten married. We could have had a family. We could have lived a long, joyful adventures together. She could have been my best friend. Instead, she dies from a vacuum cleaner. <sighs> now to get us on to something distract me from the painful death of the only one I'll ever love. Number five, Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter was a dude. What did he do? I don't really know, to be fair. I didn't do research before this video. But apparently he's from the hit anime, Georgia, which is a ui themed anime about a gay black man and an old white farmer dude. What's so sad about this death is that his death ended in a perfectly fine gay, black, interangel, transgender romance, which is bigoted and offensive to us who cannot handle things like this getting cancelled. This is fucking horrid, and we need reputations for emotional trauma! Number four. It fucking... They took down hentai heaven! No! Fucking... Why? Why would they shut down hentai heaven? I can't see big anime titties anymore. I don't want to go on edge videos. This shit's fucking gay. Alright? Bring back fucking hentai heaven! Come on! What the Number three, Midi. Midi truly is one of the most saddening characters in anime history. She is from the most cursed anime to ever exist, Made in the Abyss. Midi was an orphan child who wanted to be nothing but a cave raider. On a field trip to go see the six later, she befriends this girl, Nanachi. Nanachi is a nerdy, shy girl and also an outcast from the orphanage. The children on the field trip are used as an experiment to test the effects of the six layer. Trying to get at least one creature to retain its humanity. Midi was unfortunate to be one of the many blobs of flesh. What sucks even more is that she can feel pain and she lives eternally, unlike the rest of those who die very quickly. And the mean evil men work there, try to cut her apart and test her durability. Reminder, she is a living blob of flesh that cannot communicate. She is shown deep down to be a scared, lonely little girl who is in a constant state of agonizing pain. Number 2, Jekka. Jekka from Kwasovo 9 is a really fucked up girl. She's everything you don't want your daughter to end up. And in the feet side, in one of the routes, she commits not living anymore because her whole life has fallen apart. 
even her own best friend betrayed her, causing her to overdose on Xanax. And finally, for number one, Prushka. Prushka is from the third Made in Abyss movie. I had the misfortune of being a retard and doing the exact opposite of what was advised by getting high and then watching the third Made in Abyss movie. Do not do that. To say the least, I've been sober since. Fuck alcohol. Fuck weed. Fuck all of that. That shit's terrible. Never doing any of that again. Prushka was a sad orphan who suffered from the curse of the abyss. So she was found a small hairless girl suffering. However, she would get adopted by this same man who would turn her into a box of vitals inside. Prushka grew to trust this man, who she called her father. She thought of him as the greatest man to ever live, and he decided to use her as a sacrifice to become his white whistle. Which, I don't... I'm just gonna say it. It involved turning her into a bleeding box of organs which are alive and conscious. However, are in a constant state of pain until the organ in the box produces a white whistle which has magical powers. By that point, it dies. And her soul is trapped within a white whistle. The reason this is so sad is that the movie the whole time makes her into a very sweet and innocent girl who just wants to explore. Just to have her body shredded by her own father. Just to become a fucking white whistle. Man. That's fucked. Anyways, uh, yeah, this video is 10 minutes long. I'm finishing this on a school night. I think I'm just gonna go cry to sleep like usual. Yee.